about the first week of practice go? It went, you know, it went, I guess, about as good as I could expect it. We've, you know, we've got, we got a lot of new players. Um, the first week is always kind of, you know, the, the young guys are feeling their way through the, you know, for the for the first few days, just trying to figure out what we expect. And uh, but I thought it, it went real well. I think that, you know, that's a there's six position players or six spots in the in the field that we're trying to replace and. You know, so this is a big fall for us. I think the players did a pretty good job. I feel like the, the coaches were just really bearing down on trying to figure out how to, how to handle this and uh, make sure we can get the right players in the right spots because, you know, there's some guys that are athletically, they, they play two or three positions. We'll just figure out who can handle it and, and then go from there. But I, I'd say that the first week went about as well as it could have gone. How do you approach these two scrimmages since they're real, real Division One opponents and everything? Yeah, the outside competition, I think it, it really, the way we lined it up, I just feel like that uh, it breaks up fall ball. The, sometimes it gets a little bit monotonous scrimmaging against yourselves. And it also gives the coaches an opportunity to, to throw a team out there that, you know, possibly is more of a starting lineup. And you only play one team instead of two, obviously. You're not playing 18, 19, 20 guys like you do in a scrimmage. You're playing nine. And, uh, you know, it opens some eyes. But I think, uh, we practice two weeks, we play a game against OU. We practice two more weeks, we play a game against, you know, Wichita State. And then uh, and then we'll finish up the season a couple weeks later, you know, we'll be completely done two weeks later. And somewhere in there we'll have a, a Cardinal and White series and and uh, move on to the off season. So I just think it's a good mix. But I, the way I'm going to handle it is, is just, you know, we'll go out there and, you know, we're going to probably play 14, 15 innings. And probably the first nine innings, you do all you can to try to win the game. You know, I'm not going to tell you I'm not going to try to win. Uh, but that's not the main thing we want to do. We want to make sure that, you know, we get guys in the right situation, see how they can handle a little bit. And and then the, the second game against Wichita State, probably the same type setup. Maybe 14 or 15 innings and, you know, try to throw our older guys or our more experienced guys or maybe the better guys. We'll see by then, you know, the first few innings. So do you, do you, do you, do you, yeah, we're going to go early, you know, just to try to give it more of a, a road trip flavor, just to get the feel for it, especially the new guys. And, uh, you know, they have a football game on Saturday, so we had to be creative. We, we did find a hotel, uh, maybe uh, bunking up more in a room than we normally do, but that's just the way it goes. And, uh, you know, but I, we'll go over there because we play at 1230 uh, on, on that Saturday. And, I'll be, and they have a game that night, I think it's 7. So we, we need to get that thing over with probably by 5 o'clock or 5.30 at the latest. And we'll take a shower and get out of there and come back. And obviously their guys will just hang out. But, yeah, that'll be uh, – we're going to try to make it like a real real situation, get a little feel for it. So do you, you do a score after nine innings and just play an extra five? Four? Well, you know, I mean, really it's, it's, it's considered practice. So we'll run the scoreboard when we're here. They'll run the scoreboard when we're there. But I would think that after eight or nine innings or ten innings, that, that both coaches will make some changes. Probably make a few in there as far as pitching, obviously. You know, in the first nine innings, you know, we could throw as many as four or five guys. And and then, you know, those last five innings, we may throw five guys one inning just to get them some experience to pitching on the road or to somebody else. So we won't. I mean, I imagine we'll just keep scoring the whole game. How's it worked out with Kerstad and right field, or how much has he been out there? Yeah, so far so good. You know, I talked to him in the summer that I'd kind of like him to go over there and uh, just stay over there all fall. And it's it's been good. He's playing there today. We're scrimmaging today. We're scrimmaging tomorrow morning um, just to get used to it. But he played center field in high school. We moved him to left, obviously, last year. And uh, we just feel like left field this year could it could be a little bit of a, a spot where we, we put somebody who's swinging the bat well or maybe a good matchup, right-handed hitter against left-handed pitcher. And uh, just let you know Fletcher and Kerstad settle in at their spots and uh, leave leave left field open for a little more competition, especially this fall. You got uh, a lot of new guys, but you got a good core uh, of a couple of guys there, the position players, and then a good core of uh, pitchers as well. Yeah, you know, we mentioned a couple of them, obviously Fletcher and Kerstad, and then you know Martin in the infield, and then uh, Jack Kenley's been doing really well this fall. He, he'll be a starter for us in the spring and. You know, they both playing short this fall. They both done a, have done a great job. Um, 
you know, and both of them have played third base. So uh, we'll, we'll figure that out as, as time goes on, but they're both going to be in the lineup, especially if we started tomorrow. And then McFarland's really improved from last year. I see a guy that uh, had a frust frustrating year, had a couple good weeks for us in the middle and then really didn't do much and went out and played summer ball and hit 320 with a wood bat in California. His team won the championship and I think he might have been MVP of that tournament, that little series at the end. And he's swinging the bat really well. Um, junior year, it's, it's time, and, and we need someone like him to step it up. The Wichita State game will be a Saturday? No, it's Friday. Friday at 6 p.m., as far as I know. I didn't see the release. I think that's when we schedule it. So we'll probably play till about 10. Right around, I think Todd and I, Coach Butler, we've, we've, the number we've thrown out is 14. And I think they're going to head back that night. So, you know, we'll, we'll probably be done around 10. That's what I'm guessing. Who's at second base? Second base is a little bit open right now, too. You know, we have a transfer, Trevor Ezel, uh, in here that's a switch hitter. He's a, uh, you know, he's a grad student, fifth-year kid at a uh, uh, southeast Missouri State switch hitter from Bryan, Arkansas. You know, he's a kid that should have taken him out of high school. He committed fairly early. and. Got bigger and stronger, went up there, and just all he did was hit, hit, and he can run. He's strong, but he had uh, some surgery on his shoulder this summer, his throwing arm. He had to get it tightened up, and uh, got some staples in there, so he can't start swinging a bat for maybe another month and throwing for another couple of months. And you know, I think if he comes back and he's healthy and he can throw, that he'd be the he'd be the guy to beat out because he's an offensive player that has experience. And uh, he hit about 385 last year for him, had like 85 hits. And he did that like three years in a row there. He had one year with an injury, and that's why he has another year. But, uh, you know, we've got a couple of young guys, too, that are battling for that. So, uh, you know, we'll see how it turns out. So, uh, Zeb and uh, Kostyshak had pretty good summers. And they both had really good summers. You know, I think sometimes sitting and watching, you get tired of that. And you just go out and you want to prove that you're good and you, you deserve it. And they both did that. Kostyshak's going to throw in the scrimmage tonight. Zeb's had a little bit of soreness in his shoulder, so we're giving him some time up this fall, get him back right. There's, we've had him looked at. There's no problems in there as far as tears or anything, just some inflammation and going to let it settle down. And he may pitch at the end of fall for us. We're, we're not sure yet, but costi has been throwing the ball extremely well. And, you know, it would be a, it would be a big, a big, you know, a big thing for this team if he could be one of our main guys with throwing the ball, you know, he's throwing the ball 93, 95 miles an hour. and. His first outing was really good, and the key for him is throwing strikes, and he threw nothing but strikes his first outing. Heston said his, he said his weight hadn't changed much, but that he feels stronger. What are you seeing from him? Yeah, about, about same. body -wise? Yeah, body actually looks better. It, it seems tighter to me, and, uh, you know, just growing up, getting, starting to look a little bit older. Um, he's, he's already, you know, he's already got two home runs this fall for us. He pulled both of them. A lot of times his power is the other way, and, you know, just, uh, you know, a guy that works hard, keeps the same attitude, doesn't act like, you know, he's better than anybody else. He's just another guy out here working hard, and uh, I think uh, that rubs off on the guys, knowing that here's a first-team freshman All-American, all everything, and he works as hard or harder than anybody out here, and it's been it's been fun to watch. Yeah, Cops doing? Yeah. Kevin Cops. Yeah, Kevin. Uh, you know, Kevin. We threw him two innings yesterday in a scrimmage, uh, but he all he threw was fastballs. And uh, he was he was 90 miles an hour almost every pitch. His location wasn't great. We didn't let him throw any change ups or breaking balls, and that's what he has a lot of. That's really good. You know, he's he's got two good pitches, and but he's he, you know when you look at it, he's like 11 months out from surgery. So he's uh, he's a guy that you know we're hoping that you know by by February he's he's back to being Kevin Cops. Did Hunter Wilson move on? Or he... Yeah, Hunter Wilson is going to use his grad transfer. Uh, Everything's good between us. I think that, you know, he just looked at it. He saw that we had, we got a transfer in. He knew that we had a couple other infielders coming back and a couple of young guys. And, you know, we talked on the phone in, uh, I think, late July, early August, somewhere. I think it was late July. And he's, uh, you know, he didn't get to play two years ago. He had the injury on his knee. He started out at, you know, uh, at a, another four-year school, went to junior college, came here. He just wants to play. He wants to play every day, and I don't blame him. I mean, you know, he's a guy that, he, he brings a lot of energy and he wants to play and I want to slow him down and I couldn't tell him that he was going to play every day and you know he's such a good utility type guy and I think that he feels like 
we see him as that. And uh, so he's going to finish his, he'll end up with his degree here from the University of Arkansas at semester. And uh, then he'll, he, you know, he's weighing his options right now. And he'll he'll wind up at a, at a school where he feels like he's going to get in the lineup every day. Who are you looking for in that left field? You know, I just want some, I want a good defender, uh, obviously, but I want some guy, somebody who can hit and contribute. And, you know, obviously we're going to get that from the two other outfielders. And, you know, we'll find us a good DH. And, uh, and we feel like if McFarland can swing the bat, you know, good like he can. And, you know, if Ezel's healthy and, you know, Martin does what we know what he can do with the bat. And then we have a battle at catcher right now. And, uh, you know, Kinley, Kinley was three for three in the scrimmage yesterday. And, you know, we're just trying to put a good lineup on the field. We want to be deep. You know, we want it to be eight, nine deep and have a chance to score every inning. So, obviously, I want a guy who can run and catch it, but I uh, also want a guy that can hit. But who, who, who else playing over there? Well, you know, I'm playing uh, a transfer. He's only a sophomore. Matt Goodhart's playing out there. Uh, got a couple other freshmen that were playing out there that, you know, one hits right, a couple of them hit left, and, you know, they're – you know, really tuning into how they do against opposite arm. You know, example if a hitter hits left, how they swing it against right-handers, and how's the left, how's the right-hander swinging it? Uh, I guess I said he gets the left and right, and then the, you know the lefty has, you know, can he handle left-handed pitching? Do we need to platoon there? And just trying to figure that out a little bit and putting those matchups together in the scrimmages. So. You know me, I don't like to mention a lot of the freshmen yet. I just they haven't done anything. So uh, I'll be able to tell you a lot more in a couple of weeks on, on how the freshmen are doing.